Hiya, and welcome back to Dawn Chorus. The game that teaches us that, did you know that Devon is probably a bender? I know from Avatar The Last Airbender, he's probably a bender. What type of bender is he? A backbender. Anyways, let's just hop right in. I'm still surprised that Devon's room is just like all the other rooms in this guest house. I was sure he'd get a bigger one on the account of being a teacher, but apparently that's not the case. Maybe there aren't any bigger ones here, and all of the faculty got the rooms with the lowest numbers, the closest to the lobby. You don't have to wait for me. Sit down and start eating if you want. Devin sits down in the chair closer to the window, and I take the one closest to the door. Oh, no, don't tell me it's Brunost. Brunost? Only now I take a better look at the food we got for supper. Two sandwiches with cheese, or if Devin is right, and he probably is, with Brunos and a slice of what looks like an apple cake sprinkled with powdered sugar. <laughs> the apple cake is deliciously browned on the edges and smells faintly of cardamom and cinnamon. Brunos is a local specialty which I've heard of but haven't tried yet. It looks like cheese, only darker, but supposedly differs completely in taste. You're not a fan? Not really. I generally find Norwegian food pretty bland. Brunos isn't that bad, but I wish we got some Monterey Jack or Swiss instead. There's a subtle note of nostalgia in his voice. I wonder if he misses his homeland. Although he probably didn't move out without a good reason. Oh, maybe you want some tea? Oh, sure, if you're offering. Water is fine, but I like having something hot to go with the meal. Devin goes to make us tea, and I redirect my attention back to the food in front of me. Okay. Here we go. I take a bite of the sandwich, not really knowing what to expect, but trying to stay open-minded. It's sweet, but savory and salty, too. Kinda nutty, but has an aftertaste similar to caramel. Overall, not bad. Much different from cheese, though. Mmm, it's not that bad. A bit too sweet for me, maybe, and I don't think I'd buy it myself, but it's not bad. We're feeling the same about it, then. My guess is that you have to grow up here to appreciate it, because apparently my Norwegian genes aren't enough. By the way, would you mind if I played some music? No, go ahead. Oh, I know that song, it's... American Pawball, yes. And here you are. Devin puts down a cup of steaming tea in front of me. The smell hits my nostrils momentarily. It's deep but very pleasant. Makes me think of a forest in autumn. All drowned in colorful leaves. Caramel cheese. You know what? I'm actually kind of curious what Bruno's looks like. I'm, I'm kind of curious, and... That looks like caramel. That looks like caramel. It, it looks like caramel. I'm sorry, but it does. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Will the record spin out of control? Put it up. Okay. Okay, I, I have to grab the capture card real quick. Let me grab the adapter. Adapter, HDMI, cable. I have it up on the other laptop. Where's the fucking... Ah, God damn it, Rengoku. Don't question me, I'm still sad about his death. Oh wait, that's a spoiler. Shit. So pissed. I'm very fucking pissed. I fucking miss him. Okay, okay. Plugging it into the wrong end. Plugging the wrong end in. Damn. Take that out of context, I don't give a shit. Fucking... Yeah. Work with me here, laptop. There we go. Where's the video capture device that I want? It is not there. It's right there. Hang on. Oh, there it went. And on laptop, work with me here. 
Rainbow. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right there. And let's get back to the game. I'm going to unhook all this. Now you want to eat it. Do you want to eat the cheese, the caramel colored cheese, or the fucking rainbow? Because apparently both's an option. The smell hits my nostrils momentarily. It's deep, but very pleasant. Makes me think of a forest in autumn. All drowned in colorful leaves. I think they. T I think rainbows taste like Skittles. Yeah, I think rainbows taste like Skittles because, you know, uh, taste the rainbow. What's this? It looks like regular black tea, but the smell is much more complex. It is black tea, only of high quality. To be exact, it's Darjeeling. Second flush. Second flush? It means the second growth of the same plants in a given year. The first flush has a sharper flavor, and the second flush is milder but more nuanced. It also has less caffeine, although it's still caffeinated, so it's a better choice for evenings. And Darjeeling is the place of origin. The best black teas are from there, and this one is really nice. Honestly, I didn't expect you to, to be the type to drink fancy teas, let alone be this knowledgeable about them. I myself am more of a coffee guy, like most Finns, by the way. Most of Europe, I think. I've noticed that tea isn't that popular in these parts. Before I moved out of the US, I was mostly a coffee drinker too, but Rune is a real tea freak, and he took me to a tea house a few times. Showed me various kinds of tea and explained how they're made and how they differ. And after that, I was hooked, too. Interesting, because I wouldn't guess that about Rune, either. Maybe I'll have the chance to ask him someday. I take a tasting sip of the tea, careful to not to burn- Careful not to burn my tongue. Ah! It really is good. You know what? You know what? You know what? Lug. 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 Oh, wait. Wrong thing. Uh, let me- Turn on the webcam. Lug, I, I have something for you if you want it. I have something for you if you want it. Uh, oh, I ate some, but fucking lemon heads. That's not a joke. I should have a fucking bag of lemon heads. <laughs> I have a fucking bag of lemon heads. Or would you prefer sour apple rings? <laughs> I have too much shit in here. <laughs> it really is good. There's almost no bitterness, but the flavor is deep and complex. Slightly on the sweet side. They're fine, just throw them on the screen so I can eat it. Sour apple rings. Oh god, okay, okay. This la last distraction, last distraction. Let me grab them. These things, fucking, uh, fucking, uh, candy rings from the fucking Dollar General. Which is where we need to take fucking Aiden to. We need to take fucking Aiden to the Dollar General. <laughs> Those are sour apple rings. They taste really fucking good. But granted, yeah. Licking your screen right now. Maybe don't do that. It's like a warm hug in a cup. I see you like it. I'm glad. I'm a fan of this one, too. Devin shoots me a smile before digging into the food. And just like that, the distance between us diminished. I continue with eating, too, finishing both sandwiches in silence, sipping on the hot tea occasionally. You seem really deep in thought. Is something wrong? Oh, no. I just got lost in thoughts a bit. Don't worry. I was wondering, I haven't met a teacher who would care about their students so much. No, no, you know what makes me do that? Oh, hi, uh, welcome. No, no, you know what makes me crumple like paper in the best way possible? And it's actually been a... F no, it hasn't been that long since I've had them. Deep fried Oreos. I know, I know, I'm, I'm eating as if Americans have free health care. <laughs> yep, 
yeah, deep fried. They like take the Oreo, put it in a uh, pancake batter, and then fry it in oil, and then they give it to you. And they taste like happiness. They taste like pure, unadulterated happiness. The first time I had them, I was a fucking sophomore in high school. This was the first time I had them. Um, banned at an away game. I got some before they sold out. That's just an Oreo pancake. No, no, because an Oreo pancake is fried on a stove. These are deep fried. Especially when covered in powdered sugar. Mmm! You really do seem to care, unlike most of the teachers I know. Do you feel like teaching is your calling? Let's say that my teachers weren't the most attentive or understanding. I promised myself that I'll be better than that and be there for my students when they need me. Which doesn't happen too often, frankly. You know, I'm just a coach and this is just my second year of teaching. I doubt I'd be anyone's first choice when they need some help. Language barrier isn't really there, thankfully. I'm not bad at Norwegian and all the students speak English fluently anyway. But I'm, a for but I'm still a foreigner here, even if I have citizenship. Why did you move here? Oh, heck yeah. Or rather, why did you move out of your country? Devin sighs and leans back on the chair with a cup in his paw, looking somewhere behind me. That's a question with a long answer, and I don't want to bore you. Let's say I didn't feel good there and needed a fresh start in a friendlier environment. It's time to drink water. Environment? That's weird. Americans are generally known for their friendliness. It's time to drink water. <laughs> It's time to drink water. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs>, Laughs in American. Literally anywhere but the US. Maybe not in his state? I don't really mind the longer answer. It's not like we're in a hurry or anything. Devin takes a long sip of the tea and puts the cup down and hesitates for a moment before speaking. I grew up in a small town in Ohio where there wasn't much to do or see, and I lived there until I decided to move here. It's the kind of place where rumors spread like wildfire and people aren't exactly open-minded. My school years weren't the easiest, and in high school there was a group of students very determined to make my life as unpleasant as possible. But why would anyone want to make your life unpleasant? Let's say it's enough to be outside the norm to get that kind of treatment. American schools aren't the most forgiving environments. That is true. Anyway, soon before my 29th birthday, my partner at that time broke up with me, and I was sure that I'm wasting my life there. That was a good timing because our relationship wasn't going anywhere anyway. The breakup gave me the impulse I needed. I was fed up with all that and understood that I have to change my life completely. Rather, abandon the life I had and find a new one before I'm 30. Felt like if I waited past that, I would never get out and stay unhappy for the rest of my life. At first, I considered moving to the West Coast, but I remembered that I could always move to Norway. I graduated in 2021. I graduated high school in 2021. And I can confirm it's gotten worse. And, but I remember that I could always move to Norway. And you know the rest of the story. I was lucky enough to find an open position for a coach at a university, and well, here I am. He smiles at me and leans on the table, as if signaling the end of the story. That's a lot of information to process, and at the same time, it's not enough to tell me what actually what actually happened. Something tells me that prying further would be a bad idea, though. At least for now. If you're unhappy there, then I'm glad you moved out. I never understood why people stay at places that make them unhappy. We're only given one short life, and they're wasting it on being miserable. Not everyone can afford to leave. It wasn't easy for me, either. I had to sell everything I had to be able to move here. People are often scared, too. They're afraid of leaving their friends behind, of the language barrier. They're scared that they might have a hard time finding work or fitting in. America is so awesome until you remember it's America. 
exactly. What the fuck is a kilometer? But you did it, and by the look of it, you're better off this way. Yeah, you're right. I feel better here. I didn't have many friends there, and I didn't have anything to lose. I'm still slowly getting used to living here. The different mentality, different customs, different place of living. But yeah, I'm better off this way. Devin glances at a watch before grabbing a slice of cake. Okay, the telescope should be ready to be packed. I'll go deal with this quickly. You can go ahead and take a shower if you want. Okay, I think I will. I probably don't smell yet, and I already took one shower today, but I'm starting to feel tired, and it would be nice to freshen up anyway. You don't want any help with that? It's fine. It's a tedious work, and you still have a cake to finish. By the way, if you want to go to sleep already, my bed is the one close to the window. I'll be back soon. If you want to leave the room, just leave the door unlocked. Sure thing. And just like that, Devin exits the room, leaving me here alone. He must really trust me to do that, and that knowledge comforts me. A shower can wait a moment longer, though. I still have that slice of cake. Grab it and take a bite, and the sweet and tart flavor of ripe apples fill my mouth. Oh, it really is good. The crust is perfectly baked and crumbles easily, and the hint of cinnamon enhances the flavor. It's really well-balanced, and nothing overpowers the rich taste of apples. Oh, wow, this is nice. Definitely makes up for the Brunost. Pleasured sigh escapes my lips before I bite into the cake again. With a bathroom kit fetched from my camera bag, where I kept it all day, I enter the bathroom. Time to commence the evening maintenance. I first brush my teeth, paying special attention to my long canines. I thought they had a kit with a toothbrush designed for Villa Day. Those bigger and wider universal ones were sometimes painful to use. Then I undress myself down to the, down to the boxers, putting all my clothes on the toilet lid. First making sure that it's clean, and look at myself in the mirror. My face is the same as ever, but I feel like I'm looking at someone else instead of me. I trace the stripes on my cheek with my claws, following the familiar shapes. I didn't expect this day to end like this. Not that I'm complaining. It would be nice to have my stuff back, but that's not a big price for being where I am now. It's both exciting and unnerving. As if I was doing something forbidden. Maybe in a way I am. I wonder what the rest is doing now. Lake and Jorgen, Miko, Rune, Bjorn. They seem distant and unreal. As if the rest of the day was just a dream. I take off my boxers, letting them fall to the ground. Grab the shampoo and conditioner from the bathroom kit and get into the shower. The water is warm and pleasant. Wasting no time, I open the shampoo and start rubbing it into my fur, starting with my head. I wonder what Devin thinks of me. I doubt he could consider me a friend yet, but... He at least seems to be comfortable having me around. I'm starting to think he is a bit lonely. He doesn't seem so from the outside, but when I think of it, he seemed conflicted but happy when I asked him if I can stay with him tonight. Instead of doing his own stuff, he spent the whole evening after stargazing with me. None of the teachers I know would ever do that. Moving abroad as an adult must have been hard for him than moving out was for me. I can always find new friends at the university or in clubs, but how do you make friends in your 30s? Must be hard even without all the hurdles he has, like the language barrier. I didn't really think about all that before, but now I feel like I understand him better. What he told me about himself during supper sounded somewhat cryptic, and I have no doubts it was cryptic on purpose. Maybe if I try to read between the lines, I might guess what he was hiding. I'd suggest waiting for a bit more. I'd suggest waiting a tiny bit longer. Like, wait until we're finished with this one, which might actually be a couple weeks. I don't know. Maybe if I try to read between the lines, I might guess what he was hiding. He didn't say if his partner was a man or woman, and he mentioned some rumors, so maybe... No, I probably think about that only because I myself am not straight, and just want him to not be straight too. And even if just to prove that this world is not so heteronormative, 
but still that would make sense. I'm not sure what to make of it, and I don't want to draw conclusions yet. I continue with the relaxing ritual until I'm all clean. Then I open the conditioner and apply it generously, brushing it into my wet fur. It's unbranded, but it smells nice. Now I smell nice, too. Finally, I rinse my whole body again and turn off the water. I step out of the shower and dry myself with a fresh towel, which takes some time when you're covered in thick feline fur. Finished in a few minutes, plus modern technology for those thick, super-absorbing towels. Only now I realize something. I don't have any clean clothes, so I need to put on the same ones from today. Uh, I wish I at least had a fresh pair of boxers. At least I didn't sweat that much today and already took one shower, so it could be worse. I'm going to skip the t-shirt this time. It's warm enough without it here. Wearing only boxers, I open the door and step out of the bathroom. A cloud of steam follows me as I step out of the bathroom. Might have gone a bit overboard with the water temperature. Looks like Devin is not back yet, after I finished everything really quick or it's taking him a long time. Maybe I should have gone and helped him anyway, but I don't think he'd let me after the incident with the stairs. I'm not that clumsy usually. Maybe it's a long ride that wore me out this much. I drop my dirty clothes down on one of the chairs and lie down on the bed. The patterns in the wooden ceiling above me seem endlessly detailed, like ripples on water on a windy day. I simply rest for a moment, letting my mind wander. And I look to the side and notice Steven's tank top on his bed. When did he drop it there? Probably not now. It must have been when we entered and I just didn't notice it before. A very, very bad idea pops into my head. If Devin, if Devin didn't come back yet, maybe he won't be for a few more minutes. Should I? What the hell, Arvo? I shake off the weird thought. Instead, I get up and walk to the cupboard with the electric kettle where Devin keeps the speaker. Only now I see that there's a disc man plugged into it. It still surprises me that he uses this thing to play music. Well, why he uses that instead of a phone is beyond me. It's not even vinyl. Which one could argue sounds better or just different? Although bringing an entire record player and a bunch of vinyls here would be even more of a hassle, I guess. I like the convenience of having the access to all the music I want in one small and versatile device in my pocket. For the moment I consider turning the speaker on and playing the CD, but I decide that I shouldn't touch stuff that's not mine. Especially if it belongs to a teacher, that's just asking for trouble. Next to the kettle are a few paper Ziploc pouches with what I assume is loose leaf tea. Their names are written on the bag, but I don't recognize any. Jin Quan, Jin Xuan, Tamar Yokucha, Sencha Miyazaki. Last one rings a bell. Wasn't this that famous Samne guy? Hayao Miyazaki. Hayao Miyazaki. Studio Ghibli. Hayao Miyazaki. Wait, wait, wait. Is. Hang on. Okay, it's a type of tea. The, what I was thinking of was uh, Hayao Miyazaki from Studio Ghibli. You know, like uh, stuff like My Neighbor Totoro, Spirited Away, uh, Howl's Moving Castle, uh, Princess Mononoke, My Neighbor, My Neighbors the Yamadas, Ponyo, uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. Yeah, yeah, Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he has another business on his side, making high-quality teas for university coaches. Suddenly hear the door opening and Devin walks into the room. That took me some time, but I'm back. He looks at me for a moment and then quickly turns away, looking somewhat uncomfortable. Only now I realize that I'm wearing boxers and probably not looking very decent right now. Ah, sorry! Still, I thought he'd be used to the sight of males in their underwear only being a coach and all. Well, not in his bedroom, maybe. No, don't worry. Don't mind me. I'll go take a shower now anyway. You can go to sleep already if you want. I'll be back in a moment. Walk up to the chair where I drop my clothes and put on a used t-shirt. I'd much prefer a clean one, but I guess that's better than not wearing anything. No need. No need to. I'm not that tired yet. Okay, but don't wait for me if you want to go to sleep. You can turn off the light whenever you want. I don't have much to do, but I'm feeling oddly energized. I don't feel like getting into the bed just yet. Suddenly I remember that I haven't checked my phone since the stargazing, so I walk up to the chair and take it out of the trouser pocket. Got a few new messages and I sit down on my bed to answer them. Oh, a message from Rune, that's not something I expected to see. Sent more than an hour ago, but I haven't checked my phone since then. Yeah, I saw you chatting with Devin outside when I was eating, what's up? Are you in trouble? Oh, I know, I know. 
if you want if you want a if you want an anime artist or mangaka that is so fucking wholesome look at junji ito just look at junji ito he makes some of the most fucked up manga like visually it is so fucked up and yet he is one and yet from what i've seen he is one of the most wholesome people on the planet i think i think attack on titan was mine junji ito mentioned woo i know <laughs> it it's such it's so funny because you have hayao miyazaki who yeah you have hayao miyazaki who makes some of the most wholesome anime and if I'm not mistaken, he fucking hates anime. Then you have Junji Ito, who makes some of the best horror manga. And he said to a cartoon cat biting a girl's hand that that was very scary. And nya. So uh, it, it's it's a hilarious it's a hilarious juxtaposition. I love it. That's sweet. Thanks for asking, but no. I'm staying in his room tonight, so I stayed behind to help him with stuff. You're staying with Devin? Nobody else had a free bed or what? I thought I'd get to know him better and ask if I can stay here, and he agreed. Well, I'm honestly surprised. Both that Devin agreed and that you asked. No offense, but you don't strike me as someone who'd have the guts to agree to do that. I'm not sure what to reply to that. Honestly, I'm surprised e myself even more, probably. You're an interesting one, Arvo. Sleep well today. Thanks, you too. I have a few other messages, so I start going through them, replying to each. Where are you staying tonight? You found room. Yeah, I'm with Devin. Wait, with Devin? Oh, well, there's only one we both know. Do you mean the coat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can understand the shock. Tell me how it went later. Night, I'm in bed already. Sleep well. Hey, Arvo, you found a room for tonight? Nico's messages always have proper punctu punctuation and capitalization, which is a rare thing to see. Just that. When I write with when I write with him, I do the same. Otherwise, I feel crude. Yeah, don't worry. Thank you for checking on me. I might be asleep already, so I don't really expect an answer. No problem, Arvo. Sleep well. It came, though, and only after a few seconds. You too. I drop my phone next to me on the bed and lie down with a sigh. Hatsune Miku can't collab with Lady Gagarvo no more. No! At the same moment, the bathroom door opens and Devin walks out into the room. Uh, 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 oh. Oh, well, hello there. <laughs> hello there. He's wearing pajamas and holding his day clothes in his paw. I'll be going to bed already, Arvo, but if you want to stay up some longer, feel free to. I'm leaving the light on. It doesn't bother me. You can turn it off when you're going to sleep, too. And don't worry about waking me up. I'm a heavy sleeper. Oh, no need to. I think I'll just go to sleep, too. It's been a long day, and the fatigue is finally catching up with me. It wasn't an eventful day, though, thankfully. Sometimes it's nice to just do nothing and enjoy the surroundings, especially in a place like this. A wooga. Just a wooga. No, I haven't. Wait, wait, may Oh, 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 I know what you're thinking. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. I saw that on X or Twitter. It was so foul. It was so foul. Sometimes it's nice to just do nothing and enjoy the surroundings, especially in a place like this. Not an eventful day, huh? 
Guess he must have spent it pretty differently than me. It was mostly the ride that was tiring. I didn't sleep much during it in case anything happened. Wait, no. It was mostly the ride that was tiring. I didn't sleep much during it in case anything happened. How about you? Did you get some sleep? I slept through the, almost the whole thing, but still, sleeping in a bus isn't the same as proper sleep in a bed. It's fine either way with me. Devin swiftly folds the clothes he was holding and stashes them away in a plastic bag and into the wardrobe, before turning off the light and getting into bed. <laughs> Good night, then, and sleep well. Good night. I get into the bed myself, feeling the soft bedclothes envelop my body. <sighs> I really like this guest house. The bedding here is nicer than in my dormitory for sure. I unlock my phone to check the battery. It's down to 34%, so it should last until tomorrow breakfast at least. I'll have to try finding someone with a charger before that. I'll worry about it tomorrow though. Now it's time to rest a bit. Closing my eyes, I turn onto my side and find a comfortable position. <sighs> but it's absolutely impossible to fall asleep like that. Even though my body is tired, my mind is still going in high gear. I try to silence my thoughts, but they only but they come back only stronger, like a swarm of bees. How much time did pass already? I turn my phone to check, and apparently it's only been nine minutes since we went to sleep. So that Devin is indeed a heavy sleeper. With a sigh, I get out of bed. A jolt of electricity runs through my body as my paws come in contact with the cold floor. Devin's chest rises and falls steadily in a slow rhythm. His face looks relaxed, but that's not enough to be sure if he's asleep. Stepping as quietly as possible, I walk across the room to the window and sit on a chair next to it. The moon is bright tonight, brighter now than it was during the scar stargazing. It illuminates the room with its soft glow, making it look suspended in time. I glance at the disc man laying on the cupboard. I wonder what other CDs Devin took here with himself, and what other bands does he listen to? I never really got into American Pawball before, but after today I know they will always remind me of him, and that I want to hear their songs again. It would be nice if we could just sit together and listen to some of his music. Maybe I could try suggesting that after tomorrow after we come back to the guest house. I don't know if he knows Nimble Foxes, but I bet he would like them. I wish the key to my room would stay lost for the rest of the camp. But tomorrow I should get another anyway. That's the Shining Moon again. I feel weirdly attracted to its glow, as if it was trying to send me a message. What that message could be, I don't know. But if it's something important, then I guess I'll find out in time. Day two! The sand should feel cold under my paws, but it doesn't. Even though it's October and it's night, I don't feel cold at all. I'm standing in front of a lake, observing, not moving, still as a stone. The surface of the lake is still, reflecting the starry sky above. It reminds me of the way the stars reflected in Devin's eyes. When did I see him like that? I can't really remember, but I can recall how he looked in perfect detail. I sit down in the sand and dig my paws into it. Closing my eyes, I immerse myself in the surroundings. Instead of seeing, I feel everything around me. The grains of sand under my paw pads, the grass growing all around, the trees and the insects living in them and the family of kestrels sleeping together in a nest nearby. I focus on the lake in front of me and slow down my breathing. I can feel it breathe too. I try to sync my breathing with the rhythm of the lake, trying to understand it. So a giant rock with a face falling towards Earth. Majora's Mask! Suddenly I feel the water lick at my paws, but I don't flinch. I keep completely still. Slowly I feel the water raise around me. It reaches my waist, my chest, my shoulders. Finally, it touches my snout. With the next breath, I breathe in only water. It doesn't burn my lungs. It only feels denser and heavier than air. Moments later, I'm fully submerged. I draw in water with every breath. It tickles a bit, but I don't move a millimeter. In the lake's embrace, I stay still. Observing. Not moving. As still as a stone. I feel heavy. Wait, no, that's just the thick duvet I'm covered with. My mind emerges from the depths of the dream. For a moment, I'm both in the dream and reality simultaneously. Still thinking I'm underwater. But it lasts only a second, and then the dark surface of the dream closes behind me. I remember where I am, but now when I'm waking up, the surreality of the situation hits me even harder. 
I think at one point I even had a dream about Coach. Can't recall any details, just this vague feeling. What time is it? Suddenly I get scared that it's already late and my phone alarm didn't go off for some reason. I sure my phone lying on the floor next to my bed. 6.38. Just a few minutes before the alarm. Good. I got some decent sleep and, I s and I'll still have enough time before breakfast to wake up properly. Put on some clothes and wash my face. Putting my phone down, only now I notice Devin doing push-ups on the floor next to his bed. His breathing is heavy and sweat is dripping from his snout. He must have been exercising for a while already. The panther is wearing a tank top and underwear only, and the view is nothing short of stunning. <clears throat> his movements are smooth and precise, his whole body straight as an arrow. He uses his full range of motion and makes a small pause at the bottom of each rep, maintaining perfect posture. That's really a far cry for my own push-ups. I can do maybe 15 half-assed reps and I'm done. <laughs> Stop being relatable, Arvo. He only does three more reps before getting up and wiping his face with a towel. Good morning, Arvo. Morning, coach. As I said earlier, no need to be so formal. Just Devin is enough. It will take me a while to get used to it. Calling your teacher by his name feels just wrong. Not that I don't like it, though. It diminishes the distance between us. I just need a longer while to adjust to that. I don't want to wake you up, but it's already but it's quite late already. You might want to hurry up a bit. Um, sure. I rub my eyes sleepily and get out of bed, groaning. It's colder outside of the bed, but not as cold as I anticipated. The carpet feels pleasant under my paws, though it's soft and woolly. Outside the window, it's still dark. It's not surprising, considering it's October and we're above the Arctic Circle. Glancing at Devin, I see that he's looking away from me. Oh, right, I'm still wearing all of my underwear. Oh, sorry. It's fine, don't worry. Thought it was something else. Devin walks up to the window and leans on the sill, looking outside undoubtedly to give me some privacy. I stumble to the table and put on the clothes from yesterday that I left on the chair, grab a toothbrush, and walk way to the bathroom for the morning maintenance. Five minutes later, I'm done with the whole ritual, having washed my face, brushed my teeth, and cleaned my ears. If I had some more time, I'd groom the fur on my face too, but I'll have to skip that today, or at least wait with it for after breakfast. Devin, already changed into his daily clothing, is sitting at the table. I know I told you to hurry up, but you didn't need to go this fast. He's right, I did hurry up more than usual. A quick glance at my phone tells me that it's barely 6.43. I'll make two if you want some. There probably will be some tea served at breakfast too, but I felt like having a cup of Yunin. Something tells me they won't have that here. Yunin? That's black tea from the province of Yunin. This one is a golden tip variety with a mellow, fresh taste, but still a healthy dose of theine. Thane? Devin is really fancy with his teas, huh? He mentioned that he got into them not long ago through Rune, so it's understandable he's this excited about them. A cup would be nice, yeah. Good, because I already made one. Sit down on a chair, the opposite to Devin, and he puts the cup in front of me. It's too hot yet to take a sip, but the smell is nice. Different than the Darjeeling from yesterday. It smells like a quiet, sunny morning, if that makes sense. And it makes me think of summer, not autumn. Thank you, Devin. No problem. What should I talk with him about? I suddenly find myself lost for words. Yesterday, our conversation just happened organically, but now I have no idea what I could talk about with my coach. Devin clears his throat suddenly. I look up at him, and he's looking at me with apprehension. About later today. I was thinking, how about we... Oh, what were you about to say? Aww. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Sudden knocking interrupts him and he looks at the door in surprise. Wait just a moment, I'll check who's that. Devin walks towards the door and opens them, and from the other side, Professor Arne's striped head emerges. Professor? Hello, Devin. I hope I'm not bothering you, but we're in a bit of an emergency. No, don't worry, what's up? Please, accompany me to the lobby and I'll explain on our way. They're waiting us there. Uh, sure, just a moment. Devin half closes the door and walks back to the table, taking a big sip of the tea. I'll go see what's up. Just close the door when you'll go out for breakfast. Sure thing. I'm not happy with this development of the situation, but what can I do? I hoped that Devin would at least finish talking, but I can always ask him about that later. Great, see you there. The sound of the door closing echoes in the room, and that and the silence that comes after it rings in my ears just as loud. Without Devin in it, the sudden, quiet room feels much colder. Lifeless. There's nothing left for me to do here. I finish the tea in silence and leave the room.
I entered the cafeteria around 7. There are less students inside than I thought there would be, and there's no one from the faculty yet. Looking around for familiar faces, I only see Rune sitting at the end of the room. Good morning, Rune. I sit down across the table from him, putting my paws on the table. Oh, Harvo, morning. He notices me with a short delay in his movements, seem a bit sluggish. He's either not a morning person or had a really rough night. Devin isn't with you? No, he went somewhere with Professor Arne. Sounded like something urgent. I wonder what's up. Oh! I'm afraid my worries might come true then. What do you mean? Let's wait for Devin. In any case, he should be here soon. I nod and glance at the entrance. A few more students enter the cafeteria, but there's no sign of anyone from the faculty yet. By the way, Rune, how did you sleep? Not the best, but I had some matcha. It should wake me up soon. Matcha? Powdered green tea. I prefer it to coffee. Gives a similar boost, but doesn't make you jittery. You have to wait a while longer before it starts working, though. How about you? Could be better. Good morning, Arvo. Rune? Oh, Miko. Morning. Miko joins us, sitting down next to me. What's up? I'm waiting for Devin. He should be here with some bad news in a moment. Bad news? Miko looks at the deer, puzzled. I suspect we're stuck here. Oh. How do you know? Have you talked to him already? I've seen him going somewhere with Professor Arne, talking about some unexpected issues. Rune gives me a worried look, but doesn't say anything. I guys. Damn, I slept like shit. <laughs> Looks like we're not the only ones. What, did I miss some? Not much, don't worry. By the way, I hope the food will be here soon. I'm starving. What do you think we will get? Oh, I hope they serve croissants. I rarely buy them for myself, but I hunt for them every time I'm staying at a hotel. It's almost a tradition for me at this point. Oh, yeah, we can skip. I'm just gonna... And still no sign of Devin. Hi, Jorgen! Does that mean some additional work for you? Unfortunately. Professor Arne is working on the coordinate between us and the university, but the technical side of this is on me. I'll have to spend some time here to set everything up after breakfast. Morning all! Did I miss something? They should hit themselves with a pillow until they pass out. It works for you. Um, that sounds kind of abusive, so no. Maybe don't do that. You know what they could do? You know what they could do? You know what they could do? They could go to Bjorn and get fucked up on the secondhand smoke. And then just walk back to their rooms giggling. Morning all, did I miss something? Morning Lake, quite a lot actually. The sleepy head is finally here. Devin starts with a bowl of cereal. He cuts a peach into small chunks and adds them into the bowl, along with some berries. That's a nice idea, I should try too sometime. Almost everything is better with fruits, and these cereals aren't very sweet. I got used to much sweeter ones back in the US, so some additional sugar is nice. I'll have a pastry later too, these look great. You have them in the US too? Yeah, they're pretty much everywhere, but not as good as they are here. Ours are heavier and sweeter. Which ones do you like? I love cinnamon, so my favorite ones are the ones that use it as a main flavor. They're great with a cup of coffee. How about you? Anything you recommend? I like the ones with poppy seeds. They have an interesting taste, and I like the texture. Jorgen, you're not eating anything? A coffee for me is enough. I'll grab an apple or two later. Hey, those... Your barber horn are really tasty. I'll take your word for it. I'll tell you from everything, from anything that has rhubarb in it. So much skipping. Arvo? Stop eating my rhubarber horn mid-bite and look at Miko. Hmm? Did you take any more photos yesterday? No, not really. I mostly shoot on my digital camera, but I left it in my room and only had the instant one with me. Oh, you have an instant camera? I always wanted to have one. They're so cool. They are, but the cost of film is killing me. Yeah, I bet. Still, I loved instant photos ever since I held one in my paw. I once got an album by a local band at the indie record labels fair. When I got back home and opened the packaging, it turned out that there was an instant photo from the recording session inside. Such a nice touch. Instant photos look like small glass of paintings. Or windows to alternate realities frozen in time. Yeah, I know what he means. Put the camera bag on the table and take the camera out, wanting to pass it to Bjorn. Then I noticed something colorful at the bottom of the bag, so I lean in. Guys, I think I found it. Inside the bag is the key to my room. 
take it out and inspect the tag just to be sure. And surely the number 17 is written on the wooden tag. Oh. That's great. Oh, you have your key? That's good. You won't have to wait until the afternoon for the spare key to arrive. Why would I put the key there, though? I must have been really out of it yesterday morning. I left Devin's jacket in his room, so I don't have to worry about that. My clothes are still here, there, though. I need to talk to him later about retrieving them. All done with breakfast, so I grab my bag and stand up. See you at the lectures. See you. Later, Arvo! Thankfully, I don't have to hurry. There's still a lot of time before the lectures will start, but it'll be nice to finally sit in my own room for a while. Opening the door to my room after not being able to get in the whole day feels really satisfying, and after putting down the camera bag on the table, I walk straight towards the bed and let myself fall onto it, sur surrendering myself to the soft mattress's embrace. The springs creak under me in protest like a choir of disgruntled gnomes. It feels good to be alone for a moment. Having a huge bed just for myself is pretty nice, too. I lie like this for a while, enjoying the silence. In the back of my head, I'm still thinking about Devin, though. I close my eyes and recall the image of him doing push-ups. And I try to picture him here, sitting in a chair. There are feelings inside me I cannot name. They aren't particularly pleasant, though. When I concentrate on them, I can feel my head spinning. Maybe I should go help him with the setup in the cafeteria? Yeah, I think it beats, beats your sitting, sitting here alone, fuck. Give him your other sock! Eh, just change into fresh clothes first, though. Take off my clothes and fold them, then I hop into the bathroom and generously apply deodorant on my torso and armpits. Afterwards, I take out a fresh pair of boxers and socks, both with a different pattern just as I like them, and put them on. Oh, yes, I feel much better in fresh clothes. I doubt anyone would notice, but somehow it makes a difference for me. Wearing the same t-shirt two days in a row feels wrong, even if it smells fine, right? I'm glad tigers don't sweat much. I don't have to be too mindful of my smell unlike animals of some other species. I have some time to kill now before the lectures. Maybe I'll just read a book, or I could go around and take some photos now that I have my digital camera back. Ah, but I was meant to go help Devin, but maybe he doesn't need help and I'd only distract him. Maybe a short walk with the camera would be a better idea. Girl! Also, my brain is fighting me right now. Fuck. Ah. <sighs> Take photos of Devin. Help Mr. Meow Meow! I'll drop by and check if Devin needs any help first. Wearing my own jacket and finally free of my camera bag, I leave the room. Mr. Meow Meow, have you seen the DP to HDMI converter any- Have you seen the DP to HDMI converter anywhere it was here just a moment ago? Devin, baby girl. I got one. I got one for you. Funny thing. Okay, okay. Real quick. Funny thing about Max. Especially my Mac. Which is a uh, old as fuck MacBook Air. MacBook Air. Um, it's time to drink water. They don't have HDMI. Ports. It's time to drink water. They it's do time have, to drink water. Uh, display out. It's time to drink water. It is time to what? Nope, sorry. Maybe checking the box of the cables? Oh, hey there, Arvo! Oh, I didn't expect to see Rune here. I should have guessed you'd stay behind and help Devin, though. Oh, I came to check if you need any help here. We're doing quite well, but if you have some time, an additional pair of files is always good. You could help Rune move the tables, and I'll take over the projector and streaming. Sure, getting to it. After we're done with the, cable, with the tables, Rune and I help Devin with configuring the laptop. Panther turns out to be technically competent, but maybe it shouldn't surprise me. I go to professors twice his age who can't even handle a slideshow, though. Afterwards, the three of us sat together and started talking about the university the lectures will be streamed from. From there, the conversation flowed naturally. We kept chatting until the first lecture was due to start, then Devin had to go check everything again and talk to the professor from the local university. Uh, that was good, wasn't it? 
Although maybe a bit too informative and technical for a morning lecture. Yeah, I think I understood all of it, but it took some serious effort. At least the previous one is a bit lighter. The next one is about gravitational lensing, whatever that is. Yeah, I think I'll skip it. Astrophysics doesn't interest me that much. While students are slowly leaving the room for a break, I notice a familiar lion snoring in his chair. His hair is covering his eyes with a messy white curtain, and his snout is half open. Hey, Lake. He doesn't react before I wave in front of his face. Uh, is it over? Yeah, the lecture ended a while ago. Lake rubs his eyes sleepily for a moment, then stands up and looks around. Oh, finally! Wait, aren't you studying astrophysics? What are you doing here? Well, it, I didn't look very closely at the timetable. I thought Electro on Astrothyth, you know, Astrothyth, so I thought it might must be something astrophysical I had never heard of before. I had no idea it would be about some brain stuff. So you didn't bother reading the description? Who does that anyway, right? I do. Lake. Oh my god, Lake. Well, nothing is lost. I had a good nap, at least. Thanks for waking me up. I'll be going to my room for now, so see you later. See ya. Have fun! Lake, you're so stupid. We have a 40 minute long break now, right? Yeah, although I think I'll skip the next lecture. I should be there. Gravitational lensing is interesting, but complicated as hell. If this lecture won't help me understand it, I don't know what will. I think I'll go back to my room too for now. Sure, see you in a while. See you! The room is mostly empty now, but some of the students stayed behind, talking in small circles and groups. What should I do? Stay in the cafeteria, hang out in the lobby, or go for a walk? I kind of want to go to the lobby. No, Devin Sag. I know. Yeah, let's go to the lobby. Who's that? After the lecture, I went to the lobby, hoping I could find someone to play table paw ball with me. But the place has been empty since I got here. Waiting, I start walking around. First around the room in circles, and now my paws have led me here, to the glazed corridor between the renovated lobby and the more recent part of the guest house. Arvo! Good thing you're here! Can you believe that Lake brought a VR headset with him and didn't tell us anything? Travis almost yells at me from excitement. Wow. I didn't know Lake even had a VR headset. Interesting. I don't know much about his spending habits, but I never would have thought someone living in a dormitory might have a VR headset lying around somewhere in the room. Jay Travis, I wanted to invite you all this evening. Arvo, hey there. Hi. Hey, good to see you. What are you doing here, and what's up with the VR thing? Travis and Bjorn were in my room after I came back from the lecture talking with Jorgen. Jorgen told them that I have a VR headset while I was out, and you can't imagine how excited Travis got. So we're here to play now. Do you want to join? Sure thing. Only once tried, only once tried playing any VR games. It was at a convention I attended in my high school years. There were, there was a 45-minute long queue, and everyone got five minutes to play. What are we playing? Rhythm Sword. Oh, I've heard of that one. That's not the only game I have, you know. But it's the best one! I've never used a VR headset, so I'm fine with any. Oh, by the way, why here not in your room? There's a TV here. I can hook up the headset to it so that everyone can see what's going on in the game. Huh, that... Huh, neat idea. It, it'd be fun to see how everyone plays, and it might even give it a nice competitive edge. While three of us are chatting, Travis, who is carrying the headset and controller, sets everything up. I haven't played in a while. I'm definitely out of shape. VR games are fun, but there aren't that many good ones, and most of them get boring pretty quickly. I guess I see that. Guess I can see that. Do you think it's a result of technical limitations or nature of VR? Probably the nature of VR. You're limited to the space of your room, and it limits the scope of your game. By the way, where's Jorgen? He didn't want to play. He's wearing strong glasses, and he can't see the headset screen sharply in them. He said he might join us later, though, just to watch. Okay, all done. 
Great, thank. So, who wants to go first? Ooh, I want to. Thought so. You know how to put it on and use it. Yeah, I know this model. I've used it before. Can you help me with the tail tracker, though? Thor! With a bit of help from Lake, the Tanuki straps the three controllers to his limbs, puts on the headset, and turns it on. After a few moments, the image from the headset appears on the TV as well. As he looks around, the image on the TV notes with just a barely noticeable delay. Nate! Oh yeah, when I first got it, I was floored! It worked so well! Travis launches the game and scores through the list of songs, deciding on one rather quickly. The music we hear is muffled as it plays from the headset speakers, not the TV. Colorful blocks start appearing on the screen one by one to the, rim, to the rhythm of the song, and Travis hits each one down with graceful strikes. He's not bad at this. It's obvious that it's not his first time playing, and that he knows the song well. He misses a few blocks in the latter half of the track, but finishes without any problems. Ha! That went well! Yeah, you're good at this. Bjorn, you said you've never played in VR games, right? You wanna go next? Sure, thanks. Lake helps Bjorn with the headset and passes him the controllers. Bjorn's tail is too short for the tail tracker, and Lake has to extend the grips to fit in his huge paws. The bear looks around, his mouth agape in awe. Okay, this is better than I thought. How am I supposed to not walk into the TV if I have no idea where it is? Trav authority set the virtual boundary for this room. If you get close to the edge, you'll see it. Oh, neat. Now, how do I do anything? Uh, wait, can I... Lake walks up to Bjorn and grabs his right paw, showing him how to point and click on stuff, then takes him to the song selection screen. You have to click here, to the difficulty. If you ever played this before, then easy should be enough for you. With only two controllers, you'll have it a bit easier anyway. And that's all! Great, thank you. Bjorn decides on playing the same song as Travis, probably never having heard of any of the others. First block passes right by him before he even reacts to it. Same with the next few, despite their snail pace. The bear finally managed to strike one block, and after that, it's going better. Not a lot better, though. Some of them managed to complete the song, but it was a pitiful view. It was a so bad for the first time. Oh, I don't want to say what you would consider bad, Dan. You'll get better with practice, don't worry. The first time is always the hardest. Arvo, you want to go next? Sure thing. Played that game once already, so you don't have to explain anything. Okay, then have fun! I strap the small orb-like tracker to my tail, grab the two controllers, and then put on the headset. The sensation is indeed spectacular. The room around me vanished, and instead I'm in the middle of a semi-realistic arena. Surprised with how comfortable the headset is, it's always a huge achievement for one-size-fits-all kind of contraptions. It sits nicely atop my snout and doesn't hurt my ears, that's already something. The menu feels vaguely familiar, but it still takes some trial and error before I find the song selection page. I opt for the same song, too. Set the difficulty to normal as I've already played the game before and I'm up for a, cha and I'm up for a challenge. Difficulty for the tail controller is set separately as different species differ in agility of their tails. We're going to stop it for the ad when I break from the ads. <sighs> Do you know ads dance? And we're back. I settle on easy for the tail and start the song. Four long minutes and two tries later, I'm panting and considerably more sweaty, but done with the track. Wow, Arvo, that was something. Good job, yeah. Didn't look hard until I tried it, but now I know how hard that must have been. It was a challenge! That's for sure! Wait, Jorgen, when did you get here? A few minutes ago while you were playing. Okay, my turn! Lake puts on the headset first, then grabs the controller, strapping one to his tail and holding two in his paws. He thinks, for a th he thinks a bit before picking a song and sets the difficulty to EXPERT! The endless barrage of blocks immediately comes at Lake, but somehow he strikes them all down with robotic precision. His arms are a flurry. I don't think I've ever seen him this focused, yet his mouth is curved upwards in an excited grin. A grin that only widens as he jumps around, dancing to the rhythm of the song and flailing his arms around at the approaching colorful blocks. 
What the? Can you follow what's happening on screen? Nope. I'm not even trying. Oh, and I thought normal difficulty was hard. What he's doing is absolutely impossible, and yet somehow it seems almost effortless for him. How the hell has he got a perfect score so far? Clearly, he plays Project Diva. Clearly, he plays Project Diva, so... I mean, only now I look to the side of the screen and see that he hasn't made a, even a single mistake yet. You've got to be kidding me. Does he have this entire song memorized or what? None of us has the answer to that, so we just sit in on disbelief, watching Lake completely annihilate this song. Woo! That was fun! Lake. Yeah? I thought you were a lion and not a freaking cyborg. What the absolute hell was that? Oh, that was nothing. I've had this headset for a while now, so I had the time to practice. You're the easy one to play this for your time. You can play like that too if you practiced a bit. Your brain sort of builds a parser for the game's language and leads the in reads the incoming block simultaneously. I don't have the I don't have to constantly think about anything while playing. It's really liberating. I can let go of controlling my body. Everything happens faster when I can reflect on it. It's nice to get into that state of flow. Jorgen, you don't want to try. I'm fine with just watching, but thank you. Can I go again? Thor, we have a lot of time. Fucking love Lake. We're gonna leave off here for tonight. I fucking love Lake. <laughs> he de he definitely plays Project Diva. Most likely Project Diva F. Or F second. Now granted, it's actually been a while since I played Project Diva. I own a Mega Mix on the Switch, not the PC. It's a fun game, but it's been a while since I played it, and I remember getting so mad because I couldn't get a perfect on one difficulty, on the expert difficulty. Anyways, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.